Hey everybody, I told you I'd give you an equipment tour, collection tour, so I'm gonna do her. And we are gonna start with the oldest and I'm gonna try to just work my way up through stuff, try to stay with models and um, in series. So they might not be perfectly in age order, but there's a um, method to my madness. Um, oldest tractor I've got is this um, Oliver Hartpar 1827. And the model name denotes its horsepower. It was 18 horsepower on the uh, drawbar, I believe, and uh, 27 on the belt pulley. That's how they kind of, a lot of their models were that back then. The model number was the horsepower. And a little history lesson here. Uh, this is a, uh, and you got heart power cast into the block, but it's a Waukesha engine. And joint effort. And this, uh, the radiator here kind of gives you some history. Well, I'll give you some history to go with it. In 1929, Oliver, Hart Parr, and Nichols and Shepard, and eventually uh, America Seed Mating, excuse me, American Seeding joined in and formed the the Oliver Farm Equipment Company. Um, let's see, Oliver was the uh, plow maker, plow maker for the world. They shipped plows all over, and they were basically the ones with the money. And they were looking to get into the tractor market, and they had actually designed their own tractor, which was known as the chilled plow tractor because prior to the merger, uh, Oliver had been known as the uh, chilled Oliver chilled plow, and um, and the Oliver chilled plow works, and they had designed a tractor there, and for the most part, a lot of it was like this 1827, and the thing was they did not have enough facility. Uh, factory space and everything to build this tractor or the know-how to gear up like that and uh, it, by the late 20s companies were realizing that farmers wanted uh, basically one stop shopping they wanted to be able to buy a tractor and the influence to go with it at one dealership their closest dealership and uh, so an Oliver dealer really needed to have a tractor line or a heart par dealer needed to have a plow and so it was a fit for all of them. But when they had their meeting, uh, despite Oliver or Hart Parr being the uh, credited with the first successful gasoline powered tractor, uh, Oliver was the one that brought the money to the table. And so at the meeting, uh, J.D. Oliver said, if we're gonna do this, my name goes on everything. And uh, of course, Hart Parr was well known in the tractor circles, and so they didn't want to necessarily just throw that out. And so, at first, after the merger, the words Hart Parr were in large letters, and Oliver was in small letters. And there was a transition, which we'll see in the next tractor. American seating brought with it uh, grain drills. Mostly, uh, that was their plant was in Springfield, Ohio. If you have an 1827, and you're looking for the serial number tag, right here on the side of the block. This one has not run in over 25 years. Dad and I parked it, drained the gas, drained the coolant, and I just have not had it running since. I crank the hand crank every now and then just to make sure everything stays freed up and lubed up. So one of these days I just need to uh, fire it up. Really shouldn't take too much since we drained all of the stuff, that, especially the gasoline, and it's always been indoors. So one of these days that'll be another video, getting the old girl running. Dad bought it, restored to the extent it is, uh, fender's missing. Um, I'm trying to think. I think it was, it might have been still in high school or shortly after. So around 1990-ish, uh, give or take, when he bought it from another collector. 
and um, oh it's got some leaks and stuff and I guess guys didn't go into as much of a in-depth rest restoration back then you know, power washed it and threw a coat of paint on it I'm sure this was originally on steel wheels because you can see where the cutoffs are and they welded on rims to put rubber on it same with the fronts That's the 1827. Next up, we got the Hart Par Oliver 70. And uh, this, this one is a 1937 model, but the, the lineup was, uh, or this model was introduced in 1935. Um, just a big departure from what a lot of other companies had. Six cylinder engine, inline, overhead valve. Um, they just they run so smooth if you're looking for your serial tag it's right there on the block on the left side um, I had this one running last year to bring it up to this building it was in a different one it was trying to get all this stuff organized for this tour and I was driving it out and I stalled it <laughs> and I went to start it again and I broke the hand crank Sheared right off where a roll pin goes through, so I gotta fix that. But it is a runner. And from there, I just brought it up here to forklift. <laughs> but some more history. As you can see, the phasing out of the Hart Par name had taken a bigger uh, step by the time the 70 come out. And the Oliver's in big letters, Hart Par's in small letters. The uh, model number of 70 was chosen because the 70 or the engine was designed to run on 70 octane gasoline, which seems pretty crude by today's standards. But that was kind of high octane gas back in its day. And uh, that's what they stuck with. Um, all previ previous to this, all models had been like the 1827. There was a 1828, which was a standard version of the 1827 uh other 2844 i used to have one of those and i sold it um, this tractor was restored by someone else dad bought it in the condition it's in now it should be a darker shade of green more like what that 1827 was but they did a good job of painting it and i got plenty of other things to do besides uh, repainting for a darker shade so I'm gonna leave it alone, at least for now. Who knows, maybe I'll live to be 200 and can get it restored the right color. Even has the original uh, plowshare radiator cap. Those are kind of hard to come by. It's been repaired, but it's still there. Uh, when these first came out, they were four forward speeds and I think only one reverse. Yeah, there's only one in the shift pattern down there. And um, the biggest thing was with steel wheels, you just did not need to go very fast. Uh, of course, had a hitch in the PTO. PTO's kind of high on these. This was before uh, the ASAE had standardized uh, PTO dimensions as far as the distance from the hitch to the PTO and then the height from the hitch to the PTO. It's not too far off, but it's a little ways up there. And this... Uh, Towel here. Uh, it's got someone made a padded seat to put on it, but originally they just had a canvas. It was almost like a sack that slipped right over this frame, and and then it slung down, and you just sat on that sack, and the frame was spring steel, so you could uh, bounce a little bit, and and really didn't give that bad of a ride for just a canvas sack over a couple of bars. Of course, not like an air ride seat today, but. So that is the 
par, par 70, as they're commonly known. In 1937, they redesigned the Oliver 70, totally dropped the Hart Par name, just went with the Oliver name, new sheet metal, much more streamlined, um, still the same, con well, pretty much the same Continental engine, and at some point they switched from a uh, five gear engine to a three gear engine, which the number of gears are the front of the engine driving the camshaft and the magneto uh, mag, mag and or distributor switch to the other side. Uh, once again, your serial number tag is right there on the side of the block, right behind the air cleaner. This one hadn't run in a while. I got it running last summer to once again bring it up to this building, get everything organized. And uh, let's see. Oh, I'm not sure where dad got this one, but I do believe it'd been, first I thought it was a very nice original, but the closer I look at the paint, I think a very older repaint. But it's got the larger uh, lights like they had back then. Um, Press steel wheels, stuff like that. Um, oh, I know dad took this to a couple tractor pulls and parades. Haven't done too much with it. And like I say, I hadn't been running in quite some time. And it looks like that tire is needing a little bit of air. But once I got it fired up, I had to put a new coil in it last summer connections that got corroded in the old one to the point where I just couldn't get juice through. And unfortunately, when someone converted it to a distributor, they timed the distributor so the post was sticking out there and, well, rather than reworking it, they just cut part out of the side panel. But, yep, the later tractors here had the uh, ignition on the right side instead of the left, like that Hartpar 70. And another thing they did was improve the transmission. They added two more gears, two more forward gears. Um, and if you ordered it with a, or it had steel wheels on it, there was a knock, a block inside the transmission that would prevent you from going into the top gears. And if you later converted to rubber, all you had to do was pull the cover off and take the blocks out. And then you had your other two gears. I believe there's two reverses on these. I just haven't done a lot with these 70s. Drawbar was shortened up a little, get it a little more in conformance with the standards. You could get the ride mask. Well, it wasn't out yet at that time, but there was a kit to retrofit a ride master seat, which is these with the springs on here. And this one's had that conversion. Definitely smooths things out. Pretty straight tractor, nice honest one. That brings us to the Oliver 60. This one we have always owned. Got it directly from Oliver. We were, an, of course, an Oliver dealer. And it is a 1940 model. And is it, it's not only just a 1940 model. It is serial number tags down in here. See if we can get that good. It is serial number two. This is the second one ever built. We have always been the owners of it. Just happened to get that when, uh, when it came in and uh, used it here on the farm. Um, when dad and I restored it and oh, was that about 91, I think. Paint was pretty much gone from it. It sat in a barn for 
about 20 years at that point. The last time the oil had been changed on it was about six months before I was born. <laughs> According to the filter, we pulled it in. It had been undercover all that time. And uh, we'll check the valves, make sure they weren't sticking, put some oil down the plug holes and spun it over and fired it up and it ran. But we still stripped it down and cleaned it up and repainted it. Even uh, the early ones had chrome uh, rings on the headlights here, just like this. Dad got the headlight rings uh, re-chromed. Um, original seat, we got it reupholstered and repadded, but that's the way they're supposed to be. Uh, mechanical lift, when we pulled it out of the barn, it had a set of cultivators on it. Dad had uh, cultivated a lot of corn with this tractor back in the day. Still has the original gauges. Temperature gauge doesn't work, but the amp and the oil pressure gauge still work. And I think it's got a reproduction set of gauges and I wanna please put the temperature gauge in there. I just uh, don't like the idea of them not knowing how hot they're running. Let's see, so the early ones were only four speed transmission. Later on, they added a fifth gear, helped them scoot along a little better. PTO on the back, drawbar. But pretty much what this tractor was, was a corn cultivating tractor. Um, it did not have a belt pulley on it when we restored it, but we found one and put on. Um, these tires were what were on it. I don't think they're original, but they are definitely old. They were on it when we restored it and they were in such good shape. Didn't see any reason in replacing them. 9536s, I believe. Old Firestones. Did replace the fronts. They'd seen their better days. Been to a few shows with it. Went through the engine, so it runs like a champ. This is the first tractor Dad and I painted together. In retrospect, learned a lot doing it. Could do a lot better job now, but it's also the first tractor my dad and I restored together, so it's, it's not gonna get messed with. I got plenty of other projects burning away. Legend is, Good friend uh, that helped us out on the farm and at the dealership told me that uh, sometime in the 1960s, Oliver contacted Grandpa about this tractor because he'd never turned in the warranty papers. And the way it worked was you got a tractor in a dealership and usually you had some time to pay for it to the company, the dealer did. And then, uh, and then after so much time, they either had to start paying on interest, the val of interest on the value of the tractor or buy the tractor from the company. And, uh, but when you sold it, you'd turn in the warranty paperwork so they knew the, when to start the warranty and all that good stuff. Well, since they sold it to themselves, Grandpa never got around and turned in the warranty work. And so to Oliver, it looked like it was just still sitting on our lot and never, you know, been sold. Although I guess technically it was, the farm used it. I don't know how they ran it through the books. That was well before my time. They wanted to buy it back as a promotional thing. You know, it had gotten paid for. Oliver had gotten their money. They just, uh, it showed up in the, in the books that it had never been sold. No one had ever uh, turned in warranty work for it. They thought it would make a good promotional item if this tractor had been sitting in a dealership all this time and second one built. But turns out, you know, it had been used and Grandpa told him, oh no, no, we sold it. We just never turned in the paperwork. So Oliver had their money, so there wasn't much more they could do about it. We still had our tractor. Let's take the 61st spin and go look at the next tractor in the tour. I'll turn the gas on. Threw a battery in it. I haven't had it running since the last 
Oops. Well, that could be ugly. I'm running out of hand. Maybe if I put that there like that. much to look at but that one and that one are both Oliver 80s they were uh, essentially a improved version of the 1827 that I showed you earlier um, kind of like to think someday I get enough uh, together between the two of them to make one tractor out of them although the smart money would probably be on buying one already restored for what it takes to fix one up but as you can see the word uh, heart power had been removed from the radiator casting by that time. There's a 60 parts tractor there. And a 70 parts tractor there. And another 60 parts tractor there. And a 99 industrial down there. So I. I do have a couple of 80s, but I don't have, they're not a runners. I can see why they opted not to have a belt pulley on this tractor. That pulley keeps the transmission spinning for quite a while. Here's another 70 parts tractor. There's a heart part 70 down in those weeds. Another 70 and another 70. And in those trees are a couple of 70s. Uh, that's a Super 77 there, that, that parts tractor. Way over there is a deer eating my soybeans. Jerk. See how quick we can swing this around without getting in the weeds very much. Okay, well, so much for that idea.
Next up is another one that's not much to look at. And at first looking at the grill, you might think, oh, it's an Oliver 70. This is an early 88 industrial. A styled 88 is what they're often called. Um, this was at a local spring consignment auction. Had no idea it was even gonna be there. We bought it and mostly it's just sat here. The motor's still free on it. It's been quite a year, a few years since we bought it. But uh, when Oliver first came out with the 88, they had not fully decided on uh, styling yet. And so they come up with sheet metal that, to look at it, you would think it was just like that styled 70 um, that I showed you. But uh, it wasn't the same. Like these are 70 grill panels. And as you can see, they don't come all the way down. So the 88 was different. Um, the early 88s, another thing that's peculiar or distinct about them, they had uh, freeze plugs or soft plugs in the side of the blocks, and that was only for the first year. And then they eliminated those, changed the casting. Another one I'd like to get restored. They about to live to be 300. It's mostly complete. Uh, the sheet metal that's missing can as being reproduced so that ain't a big problem not sure if i'd leave the loader leave the loader on it or not it's kind of neat but it makes it harder to get on and off and mostly it'd probably just be a show tractor once it was fixed up so there is the 47 1947 oliver 88 industrial old style um there were only 300 of these made. So we were definitely gonna try to do our best to grab it when it was at that auction. And being just a little local auction, no one was there expecting to find a really rare tractor. This is my Oliver 66, it's a diesel. Wide front, I've owned it for, I think it's three years now. This one is a 1954. It's got disc brakes. The later uh, Series 2 hydraulic unit. Three point hitch. Wide front. Pretty rare combination of uh, options. Um, this is actually a drawbar cradle that fits in place of the three point hitch. That's pretty slick. Uh, cast iron center wheel centers you don't see that too often on 66s they were usually set up light with pressed steel just uh these uh diesel side panels with the they have the extra uh, get it from the other side where it lights a little better make room for the injection pump on this side and they just put one on the other side to balance the look basically um, good set of those diesel side panels with this square bubble on them is they're hard to find Good wide fronts hard to find And just nice little tractor it has the uh, worn out ride master seat Seat rubbers I need to rebuild that seat and it doesn't even have the complimentary uh, 2x4 to hold it up Next up, we have the 77 Standard. I've owned this one for, I don't know, better part of 10 years now. I took the battery out of it to put in the 60. And I am fortunate enough to, uh, if you're looking for a serial number tag, early uh, fleet lines, as these are known, is uh, down here, side of the transmission. Later on, they moved it up here on the lower part of this part of the dash. But this tractor is the second 77 standard built, serial number two. It came out of Canada. I don't know if we can get that in here very good. Hopefully you can read that. But the story on it is I had a large hit and miss engine in one of the barns here that my grandfather had owned. 
and oh, I hadn't done anything with it, and a local collector really wanted to buy it. The machine shop that his grandfather worked at built those engines, so it meant a lot to him. And he'd been offering me some money for it, and I'd said, oh, I'd probably keep the engine and get it fixed up and take it to a show. And then all of a sudden he finds this, and it's still in Canada, and he brings me a picture of it. I'm getting loading a planter up, it's corn planting season. He says, if I uh, get this and throw it in on the deal, would that change your mind? I said, well, now we're definitely talking. And so he bought it, got it moved back to Michigan, and we were able to strike up a deal. Uh, he got his engine that he wanted, and I got another Oliver that is the second one built. I've got some video of it running from just earlier before I backed it in here. Throw that in. And let's see the, uh, so the seat is not, well, it is an Oliver Ridemaster seat with the uh, later two by four holding it up because the rubber suspension is shot. Uh, originally it came with a um, seat more like what was on the 60. And because um, the Ridemaster seat didn't come out until 49, I believe it was. And Usually rub, rubber torsion springs on the back there for uh, suspension and eventually the rubber would give out and to keep from having your knees in your face, guys would usually do something to prop them up. And in this case, a two by four, farmer installed. Oh, pretty nice original tractor. If it weren't for the fact that someone really hogged out the hood to get rid of the underhood muffler and put in this cheap Stanley rattle machine. Now I have people tell me, don't touch this tractor. They love the patina. Others want to know when I'm going to restore it. Um, at this point, I'm kind of learning to like patina a little more all the time. And there might actually be paint under all that dust and rust. I've had other ones I've done some buffing on and amazed how much paint can still be under there. Um, it would be nice to find a hood with the same patina that doesn't have the giant hole in it. Who knows, maybe I'll get lucky. But I've used it running augers and a few other odds and ends. I even did some hay baling with it one time, but it's kind of geared fast for that. Um, standard tractors as this model is. Or more of a western tractor for the plains uh, areas and they didn't do row crops they mostly grew wheat other small grains and so they weren't worried about row spacing and um, clearance and so these tractors were shorter and had a fixed tread width front and rear because there just really wasn't much need to change it around um, that made them a little more economical. Generally, they didn't have a power lift. Later on, you could get hydraulics on them, but there was really no need for the mechanical lift there because they didn't have the holes in the frame for the pipe-mounted cultivators, and it just wasn't, it was too short of a tractor for that kind of stuff. And later on, they discontinued the standards, but then they came out with what was known as a Wheatland, which is pretty much the same thing, but had taller rear tires the owners of the standards to get them lower they changed gearing and then they put shorter wheels on them well then that shorter wheel has a smaller contact patch with the ground and so you just don't get as good traction as you do with a taller tire and so well you can compare it to this 77 row crop that's right next to it and it's got 38 inch rubber and those are i believe 26s so you can see where uh, a lot more clearance, a lot more uh, room for traction. 
And so that was basically the death of the standard, but all it really became was a Wheatland. Um, and they just used the same tires as a row crop to get more traction. And let's see, we've had this 77 row crop for quite some time. Dad bought it, so it's been around here for well, at least 25 years. And good runner. Another one that was out in another barn and I drove it up here last fall getting ready for this equipment tour video. Found it locally, it was only probably about 15 miles away. Don't know too much of the history on it beyond that. But it does seem to be a good runner. Mechanical lift, haven't done too much with it. Drive it around here and there. I don't even know if I've put it on an auger. Maybe that should be a chore for it this summer blow the cobwebs out this one's still old enough as band brakes i believe it was 51 or 52 they switched to disc brakes but uh early ones like this had the pto lever on the left hand side later on they moved it to the right hand side the idea was and it makes it an easy way to find if see if you've got an early one the thought was you could run the throttle with your right hand and the PTO with your left hand. And that way you could engage your implements slowly and give it a little more throttle. And uh, it would be easier on PTO clutch and just uh, and everything. And farmers just didn't like it. They wanted that lever on the right. They were always turning around to the right hand side to look at things. And, and so uh, eventually Oliver moved it back to the right hand side. because, well, as you know, the customer is always right. And so this one has a right-hand PTO lever. Now this one's old enough, it still has the, I'll have to look up the year on this one, I don't recall, but it's a, Still old enough to have the serial number tag down here. Some of them will have a C and then a, if it's a 77, it'll be C77. I don't know if it's an 88, it'll be C88. That's a transmission code. It's usually a D or an E or an F or something like that. And if you have the service manual, it'll tell you what ring and pinion gear it has in the transmission based on that code on the tag. They did it for a while, then took it away. And then uh, enough dealers complained that, hey, we really like being able to tell what was in the transmission they put it back on and then by the super series they just uh transmission codes was a regular thing 77s used a six cylinder walker six cylinder walker shaw um they'd had that deal going with the with continental with the 70 and they had looked into when they designed the 88 uh, they just looked into continuing their deal with continental and uh, because they also looked into building an engine in-house and just looking at the population in the Charles City area, the factory space and everything, they felt they just did not have the capacity to try to add a engine manufacturing in at the factory there. And so that's when they got with Waukesha because Continental had already told them we're too busy making car engines. Continental tells them we can't supply the demand that you're projecting. Um, they basically wanted to stick to the automotive sector. sector. So uh, Oliver struck up a deal with Waukesha, did some of their own engineering on some of the engines. Um, so it's not strictly a Waukesha engine. It is an Oliver Waukesha. They um, would pour castings in Charles City, Iowa, where the tractors were built. And then the story goes there was a trucker that would drive the castings uh, to a halfway point, and there was another one that came from Waukesha, Wisconsin, and he would bring completed engines back, and they would swap trailers and then go back to their hometowns. Worked out pretty good for them. But uh, Waukesha would do machining and assembly and send completed engines back to Oliver to put in tractors. Okay, now we got there. I guess this is, was my first tractor, the 1949-88. Uh, we were restoring it, and when we got done, Dad said, this is yours. Uh, 
So all that time I'd been working on it, I didn't realize I was working on my own, own tractor. Um, but it was one we had on the farm for as long as I can remember. The story was it was on the dealership lot and um, it was a narrow front with a mechanical lift on it and they had a brand new 770 that a customer wanted but they wanted narrow front and they didn't want to pay for hydraulics. They didn't need it for what they were doing. And so they took the narrow front off this 88 and swapped the 770 wide front onto here and took the hydraulic unit off the 770. And um, I think they just put a cover on the uh, 770 because there's a shaft in there you have to cut off if you have a mechanical lift that drives it in order to place the hydraulic unit in. So I've got a, a Series 3 hydraulic unit in this uh, 4988 that was originally in a 77 and it just didn't get a lot of use after that. This front axle is just is just as tight as new. These are the original rubber bumpers. There's no cracks or anything in them. Um, pretty much after that, it went on the farm and when uh, hauling forage wagons, when we were chopping, we would use it for that um, if we had enough drivers. The Super 88 diesel was a preferred tractor for hauling wagons with its power steering and diesel engine, but when uh, there was enough people driving, dad had extra help and we'd run two tractors pulling wagons back and forth from the field. This one would go to work. It had been repainted so many times. I'm trying to remember, let's see. Of course, wheels were red. And then in 54, when the supers come out, wheels got painted green. And so someone painted the wheels green on this so it would look like the newest tractors. Then uh, wheel color went to white and it had two coats of white on it. Two coat, uh, one coat of green and then the original red underneath had been repainted so many times when we stripped it down. Band brake tractor, Waukesha engine. Uh, Ride master seat. And it has the M&W pistons in it which you won't really be able to see from the outside, but they were a higher compression piston set. And that of course makes it crank over harder. Uh, it had been converted from six volt to eight volt, and that still would make it crank hard. And then oh, a few years back on eBay, M&W offered a, this is a, a gear reduction starter. There's a gear set right in there. And boy, that just made all the difference in the world on how this tractor cranks over. It's, uh, I got it back on the six volt. It's uh, the generator set up for eight, so it kind of overcharges at six, but a six volt battery will crank it over just fine with that gear reduction starter in it. Oh, when the dealership was all still open and dad was still around, uh, we had a 1850 gasser that got traded in and a customer wanted that. He was still using this 88 on his farm. He traded this in. This one has the old original, let's come around this side, another neat thing about it. The old hydroelectric uh, lever on it. And when Oliver first came out with this, you could run the hydraulic system entirely with this little switch here to move up and down and adjust the depth control on the, uh, on the cylinder with the lever. And it still works. You can hook a cylinder up and just use its electric over hydraulic. I'm trying to remember what year this one is. I'll have to look this one up too, but uh, the hydroelectric system debuted in 49, I believe. And so Oliver had electric over hydraulic all the way back then. They had to uh, invent a lot of stuff to make this system work. But, it had troubles. Dirt would get into the switches, ruin them, moisture, all that stuff, leave them out in the field. And so uh, that's why they eventually switched to having mechanical levers coming out. It was just too much to try to keep that electrical stuff uh, working right. So that's why I kind of find one with this uh, working switch on it. It's kind of unique anymore. 
That's this 88. Here's an Oliver 99. This is a four cylinder engine, uh, Waukesha. And uh, there were a lot of different versions of the 99. This would actually more be with the, uh, the 70 and 80. There was a 90. And then they came out with a 99 that just ran a higher compression head. None of these were available in diesel. The 80, I'm sorry, was available in diesel for a short time. If you can find one of those, you got a very rare tractor. And uh, this is over 400 cubic inches in a four banger. Boy, this tractor was in such good shape. Dad bought it at an auction, consignment auction. Supposedly it come out of Kansas. I think some tractor jockey had brought it out of there, but I uh, like the... The sheet metal over there was still shiny like someone had been using it the day before the pedals and everything just no rust on them nice and shined up i swear someone was still using this tractor and then they'd taken the panels off side panels off when they were new or something because you can see how this aged but this didn't they didn't fade they're still cracking in it you know it's not new but it just wasn't out in the sun where it would fade away. And so the paint on these two panels is just fantastic. The tractor really runs good. It's another one. I, it needs a wa uh, water pump resealed somehow or another. It's presenting itself as a challenge. But water le pump leaks on this one, so I don't run it too much at this point. But I did drive it in here. Runs good. Someone did a little modification, made a hand lever for the throttle. Um, I'm... I think this one is a right hand clutch if i remember right that makes it interesting to drive you have to use your right hand or your right foot to <laughs> clutch with but it's a big old brute and then they did later on have a 99 that they styled like the 88s and these other fleet line tractors i do not have one of those at least not at this point but i do have a 99 that was the big horse for Oliver at that time. I like these old style tires that are on it too. It's just a, this tractor is a real timepiece. It's too bad the lenses are missing out of the headlights. But they're not sealed beams, replaceable bulbs, so lights can still work. And who knows, maybe I've got some lenses around or something. These next two are not mine. Uh, they belong to my good friend, Alan. I'm sorry, these are not Allen's. These are Myron Wernett's tractors, the 77 and the 88. The 77 we sold to Myron's father brand new. It was a narrow front tractor. They wanted a wide front. We converted it over for them before we delivered it. Um, it's always been in their family ever since they bought it new from our dealership. And now it gets to live here with my Olivers. Uh, sometimes I say this is Losi's home for wayward Olivers. There's a few here that don't belong to me, but that's all right. They're all in good company. I've got the room and they're good friends. They help me out, they earn their keep. So this is their 77. It's new enough to have uh, disc brakes. And it has the hydroelectric switches. And last I knew they worked on this one. And then it also had, um, they had since they had issues with it, they added on manual levers. And that way if the electrical switches failed, a guy could still work his hydraulics. And that's what this is, basically a series two hydraulic unit where it's got both the electric and the manual levers. And then there's Myron's 88 diesel. This one was, uh, it was a, sh it had a sugar beet harvester mounted on it. It had a Saginaw Valley muck and mud all packed into it and everywhere. Um, it lived a pretty tough life. We overhauled the motor, just did about everything it needed, painted it. And boy, she runs good now. It's got three-point hitch on it. Definitely a rare option. 
Once again, this is not my tractor. It just lives at my place. But I asked Myron if he minded, and he said, by all means, put them in the video. Boy, I almost forgot about a couple of tractors here. The 66 row crop that dad had been working on years and years ago, and it got shuffled around while being disassembled, and everything's around here somewhere. And uh, it just needs to put back together. So when that 66 diesel came up, that seemed like an easy solution to getting myself a working 66 again. So the other thing is this OC3 crawler with a blade. Uh, this, as a kid, I remember using it, or well, I didn't get to use it, but I was pretty young. We still had cattle. And they used this to push uh, silage up and pack the bunker silo. I do remember it working. And it's been sitting down here since we got out of cattle, which was like 1981. Um, I've turned the fan on it a couple times and motor's still free and it even feels like it's got compression. I pulled the gas tank out, so it's missing right now. Got it clean because of all the crud from the old gas going bad. I need to get it painted up and then put back on here and get this old girl running. I used to have a couple other crawlers and sold them. Um, I like to concentrate on wheel tractors, but I will say, you know, this one's a family machine, worked on the farm, so I wanna keep it and get it running again. And so hopefully that can be a video in the future too, getting this old girl crawling again. But just wanna thank everybody for watching. Uh, this is the end of part one. Even that turned out longer than I thought it was going to. There'll be more uh, tour videos coming in the future. So I appreciate everybody watching and stay tuned for the next one. Thanks again.